So let's begin the closing session. Now let's begin the closing session. Uh, wow 2017. Uh, the ladies and gentlemen, you have had a very active discussion for the last three days. So on behalf of the all the panelists, uh, I have introduced two people so that they can give you the closing remarks. The first of all from Italy, uh, Maria Elena Boschi, the Chief Cabinet Secretary in Italy, please. Chief Cabinet Secretary Boski, uh, the won the uh, election in 2013, and in 2015 uh, she became a cabinet member, and now she is serving as Chief Cabinet Secretary. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me congratulate Prime Minister Shinzo Abe on his relation and thank him for this invitation. Prime Minister, has been a strong supporter of gender equality, both domestically and internationally. His initiatives and reforms have created the conditions to unleash the power of many women and to make them a great ally for the sustainable growth of our Japanese economy. Thank all the amazing women who intervened during these last three days. In particular, let me thank Kristalina Georgieva, for her continuous and impressive work on promoting gender equality all around the world. She's such an inspiring example of what women can do and achieve when in leadership positions. Finally, thank all of you present here today in this room. We, together, are the generation that can make the difference in fighting against inequalities. The world needs this energy and this commitment. Dear friends, as you know, the theme of the Italian presidency of the G7 has been building the foundations of renewed trust. Indeed, we live in a world where planning the future seems to generate a sense of increasing uncertainty and growing exclusion among our citizens. Globalization and, techni and technological innovation are working unevenly and not bringing benefits to everyone. People's concerns about security, health, education, work, a cleaner environment should not be neglected. They are real. We are convinced, indeed, that our collective responsibility demands that we respond to the needs of our citizens and invest more in what makes us social and human. People should always come first. We have to strive for a globalization that works for all. Therefore, policies pursuing sustainable and inclusive growth and fighting against all types of inequalities must be the priority of our governments. And one of the most odious inequalities in the world is discrimination against girls and women, including migrants and refugees. Gender poverty in primary school enrollment has yet to be reached around the world and girls continue to lag sustainably behind boys in secondary school completion rates. Women's participation in public life in uneven and women repressed only 20% of parliamentarians in the world's many governments. And I think that women's participation in political life, it's not simply a right, it's also a duty. The duty to try to solve problems and not only to report them. Women are still less likely than men to find a job. In fact, globally, only half of the world's working age women are employed. Also, if women do manage to find paid employment, it's more likely to be in the informal sector. And if they finally enter the formal labor market, they earn, on average, three quarters as much as men, even when the same level of education and in the same occupation. Women everywhere face much higher rates in harassment and verbal, physical, and sexual abuse. According to recent data, women and girls are disproportionately affected by forced labor, accounting for 99% of victims in the commercial sex industry and 58% in other sectors. Dear all, in 2015, the G7 German presidency created the momentum of women's economic empowerment. In 2016, your presidency, Prime Minister Abe, successfully focused on gender equality, 
by strengthening the promoting of STEM careers for women and girls and working to end gender stereotypes. The current Italian G7 presidency has placed gender equality among its top priorities. In Taormina, our leaders declared that gender equality is fundamental for the fulfillment of human rights. Investing in and promoting gender equality is not only right, but also smart. Promoting women's economic empowerment represents a crucial contribution to progress towards sustainable development. And our leaders went further. They adopted the roadmap for a gender-responsive economic environment, an ambitious, concrete, and gross-cutting action plan. The roadmap encourages G7 countries to develop and implement sustainable strategies and measures for the promotion of gender equality and women's economic empowerment, contributing to the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. We strongly believe that it's time to ensure a comprehensive and a holistic approach to women's empowerment, and the roadmap does so. From entrepreneurship to political representation, to recognizing and valuing unpaid care and domestic work, to ensuring quality jobs for women, to, last but not least, protecting them from any forms of violence. All these factors are interlinked and mutually supportive. To go straight to the point, the roadmap envisages some specific targets, timelines, and concrete actions on three core topics. Increasing women's leadership at all levels of decision-making, strengthening the foundation of women's access to quality jobs, ending all forms of violence against women and girls. I am glad to see that the roadmap informs the debate of this session today. And let me add that this roadmap will be at the core of our discussion at the first G7 ministerial meeting on gender equality to be held in Taormina, in Sicily, a few days from now. Personally, I was determined to make the ministerial meeting happen, and I humbly committed to keeping gender equality high on the agenda. We need to move from policy vision to action. On the occasion of the meeting, Ministers will also meet with a group of women who have experienced violence and human trafficking and who are living in a center. And as well as with operators who offer them daily support. To provide the right response, we need to listen to the victims of abuses and to those who help them. These women are not statistical numbers. They are our driving force and I'm sure we will have a much better discussion on what to do and how to do it after meeting them. Dear friends, gender equality is not only right, it's smart. Women and girls count for more than half of the world's population. This means that the full engagement of all the world's available talent pool is the size if we want our society and our companies to, for, to thrive. Tapping into the huge potential in women and girls boosts growth, reduces inequalities, and allows us all to live in a better world. Better opportunities for women promote diversity, reduce economic inequality around the world, make action against climate change more effective and efficient, and help mitigate the impact of demographics. Encouraging the full participation of women in public life including in security and defense, in the business world, and in a green and circular economy, leads to better decision-making all around. It's a powerful game-changer for any country. In most of our countries, we have taken significant steps towards gender equality, but much more needs to be done. This is not a women-only affair. We cannot succeed if only half of us are engaged. The engagement of men and boys here is crucial. Women and men must partner together against all forms of discrimination and violence against women and girls. We are committed to creating a new culture that promotes inclusion and respect and the fight to stereotypes, starting already at a young age. We need women and men, girls and boys, to make a major cultural shift. We also need to stay vigilant 
as we see an erosion of gains made due to the economic downturn and other mega drivers of change. Demographic trends, the digital revolution, and the consequences of climate change all have a particularly strong effect on girls and women. But I stay positive. We know that we have to do, and we have the means to do it. Each of us has a role to play in the fight to gender equality. Political leaders, mothers and fathers, educators, entrepreneurs, judges, artists, journalists, boys and girls. We can, all those, we can all do something, step up, speak out. I can assure you that Italy will spare no effort to combat violence and other forms of sexual, physical and emotional violence that still persist in public and private spheres. We will continue in our goal to promote women's economic empowerment and girls' confidence and autonomy. I look forward to today's discussion, which I am sure will be creative and generate further impetus. We can only win together, women and men, girls and boys. When women, when women have engaged on some battles, the victories have been not only for women, but for everyone. Thank you. Maria Elena Boschi, Italian Naika Kambo Chokan, Arigato Gozaimat. Ms. Maria Elena Boschi, thank you very much. Next, from the United States, I would like to invite Ms. Keiko Honda, Executive Vice President and Chief Executive Officer of Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency, or MIGA. Ms. Honda used to work for a McKinsey and Asia company, and now she is the executive vice president and chief executive officer of MIGA, which is also a body of World Bank. Deputy Chief Cabinet Secretary Nishimura, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Since I originally come, came from Japan, please allow me to speak in Japanese today. So um, if you don't speak Japanese, please use your devices. Thank you very much indeed. My name is Honda. I would like to express gratitude for the Japanese government for hosting WOW for its success. As of first December, WOW started. I have been feeling a huge amount of energy in this venue since the first day. What about you? Throughout these three days, we have been discussing uh, numbers about the impact of women participation in the society. Yesterday, the World Economic Forum issued Global Gender Gap Report 2017 it's not that Japan is focusing on women's participation, but also around the world. Therefore, there are many initiatives up and running. As a result, unfortunately, we lower the ranking by three to 114 out of 144 countries. However, if we look into details, we can see some improvements as well. It's a World Economic Forum Global Gender Gap Index looks at health, econ uh, education, economy, and politics for its evaluation. Out of that health area, Japan ranks number one. World Bank Group pays due attention to the Japanese universal health system. In order to learn from Japan, President Kim will visit early part of December to hold meetings. In this area, Japan being number one in the world is somehow I can understand very well. Next on education, we rank 74. That is two rank higher than last year. Out of education, the literacy, the uh, elementary and uh, uh, the um, secondary education, Japan ranks as number one, but in higher education ranks as 101. 
But in this area also, Japan show a great improvement. The women in my generation, only 12% of my uh, generation went to four-year colleges. I said uh, went to, I did not go to four-year college. It's not that they couldn't, but because of the time, the job description uh, had a, a sec, the, the, um, the differences between the job being offered just for male or for female. And also, there were so many conditions attached for female four-year university graduates to get a good job in companies in Japan. So for girls to get a better uh, employment, it was more beneficial for them to go to two-year college instead of going to four-year universities and to start working with a company where they can go to company from your own home rather than having independent uh, place to live. But uh, uh, at my family, we didn't really care about all these things. So I chose the hardest ever uh, way to get good um, employment. But uh, uh, employment uh, equal opportunity law was enacted after I graduated the school, uh, university. Since 30 uh, years, ever since the law was enacted, the uh, four-year university uh, enrollment by women increased to 49%, which is fourfold. And the gap between a male and a women student lowered to 7%. But in uh, the ranking, we are still number 114, and the politics is uh, now 123rd. And uh, there are other uh, improvements we were able to identify. For example, in 2016, 68% of the women are in the labor force, which is the first year ever since um, the, the number started taking that we surpassed the US. According to the World Economic Forum, in terms of the income, women generate only 52% of the uh, earnings of men. And it's only 12% that is actually the women's participation into professional and managerial position. One fourth of the women graduate four year universities, and 70% of the women of the work age is participating in a workforce. Compared with other companies, these facts are quite outstanding. Therefore, the challenge now for Japan is how we can help them realize their potential fully. The power I felt in this venue of WOW was probably a dissatisfaction of women who are not able to exercise their potential fully. And this is like a, this is building up like a magma of the volcanic mountains. And therefore, I think the uh, WOW's theme for this year was quite timely because we are now ready to try realizing potential fully. Now, I talked about the uh, equal employment opportunity law, and I went to university without knowing that the going to university far from my home was disadvantageous when it comes to getting employment. but. When I was a senior grade of the university, I was able to pass the interview of the McKinsey company for internship. And I was able to find out very interesting job there for the first time. But there was a problem. Until the age of 22 years of age, I was not able to speak English at all. But now I'm working for an international organization, so it's a really strange coincidence. So I uh, left uh, McKinsey where, we act, uh, where I worked for 24 years and joined MIGA. I still keep contact with my friends from college, but the lifestyles are so different. They make up very well, and they dye their gray hair, and they are aging very beautifully. But I'm 
far from a work-life balance. Because I enjoy my work and I learn a lot, there is no regret that I have. In Japan, there are so many high potential women in this country. However, on the other hand, there are many number of women who are avoiding to be a person in a position where they have to make judgment. Managerial position, um, the uh, number of women who, re uh, hesit who are hesitant to uh, be appointed to a managerial position exists not only in Japan, but also other parts of the world. So I'm thinking about how we can realize women's potentiality to the fully. I have a reason to do that. I have a one daughter who is third grader of the university now. That's why I'm always thinking about how best women can be used or uh, um, active in the society. I was thinking of five things for my daughter. First, deliver results instead of saying, I am a woman leader, instead of saying that, deliver results. And secondly, please suppress expectations of your customers, of your shareholders, of your bosses every day. If you cannot exceed expectations, deliver results early. That's the second tip to my daughter. And the third tip to my daughter is that it's not only the logic that moves people. So think about the way in which you can influence others. And tip number four is to define success. You have to find the area that you feel interested in. And also, if you early define your success, that will be more beneficial. And tip number five, work-life balance does not always mean the balance between the time to be spent on work and time to be spent on other than work. Work-life balance is important. I have been thinking of having more time with parent, uh, with my children is more important. But when I got this offer for my current job, my, uh, my uh, daughter was still a high school student. And I found that she was thinking about my work-life balance differently from what, how I thought. She said she wants to be proud of her mother, and therefore it may be very tough for you, but I, uh, she wanted me to pick up this job at MIGA. So working so many hours a week and having a time with family so many hours a week may be important, but making my daughter proud of me can be a good work-life balance as well. That's what I think. I cannot be with my daughter long, but for example, if I go to Myanmar or Kenya to help uh, having a um, power generation company so that the children of the company can study even during the night, I take that photo and send that photo to my daughter and to share my experience to my daughter. Having heard what you discussed at the well, I found two additional two tips to my daughter. First, empower other women. According to you and women, I was able to hear, I heard about the he for C, which World Bank is doing, my boss is doing, and also I am doing he for C. But C for C for C, C for C may be also good, I thought. But does this mean interesting position can be given to higher potential ladies than yourselves? That is C for C. C for C may be a great success than he for C if it happens. But potential. Uh, women may not always deliver results, therefore we have to think about the way in which we can measure the success. Tip number two is that empowerment is not given to you by someone else, but you can empower yourself as yourselves. That's how I felt as well. Ms. Yajima said earlier, and I heard her speaking, 
And I thought she's so young and she's great, isn't she? She was giving motivation to herself and she was pushing herself, making a step forward. It was wonderful. And also, without waiting for the uh, prince on the back of the white horse, empowering yourself and taking upon challenges uh, was um, explained. That was Minister Suji Pujastuti from Indonesia or other panel members expressed their story of not waiting but empowering themselves. Women, there are so many women who are well educated and who are hard working. But fortunately or unfortunately, including promotion, women tend to have less to lose. So instead of waiting for someone to empower you, you can empower yourself and to take risks and to change tomorrow that is different from yesterday. That's my resolve. At the age of 50, I moved from private sector company to private sector company and from Tokyo to Washington, D.C. That was a risk. I wouldn't say everything was successful and I was being helped by so many people even as of today, but I don't have any regret. I have learned a lot from this choice. So three days of WOW gave me a deep learning and I received huge energy from you and future of Japan and future of Japanese women, I was able to have a very bright outlook. Japanese government and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, thank you very much for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Thank you indeed. Honda Chokan, Well, thank you very much, Chief Honda. Um, listening to her, uh, empowering myself is critical, but also you have to use your energy to empower other people, and you can keep work-life balance. Thank you very much for your input. Now, moving on to the Deputy Minister for Foreign Policy, uh, Mr. Suzuki. Uh, Mr. Suzuki, please take the floor. Good morning, everyone. For the last three days, uh, you have participated in the uh, WOW 2017, and thank you very much and staying with us until the end. On behalf of the Secretariat who prepared this uh, event, I really appreciate your participation. Let me review very quickly these three days. The first day, we had a keynote speech, and uh, we have uh, heard a great um, speech about the uh, uh, women and also entrepreneurships uh, from the uh, people who have been leading the way in the area of women's entrepreneurships. And the second day, we had seven different sessions, uh, both in high-level roundtable and in special sessions. And in the last plenary session, we have heard from uh, seven different rapporteurs, and then we had a great audience there, too. Today is the third day, and uh, this is a special event about the uh, women's empowerment sponsored jointly by Government of Japan and also World Bank. And after the opening remarks of the uh, Prime Minister Abe, we had a speech from the uh, uh, presidential advisor, Ms. Ivanka Trump. And also, uh, we had the CEO of the uh, World Bank, Gero Geba, and also uh, Foreign Minister Kono, and followed by the uh, panel discussion, how to support the uh, women's entrepreneurs. Well, we have discussed on uh, so much diversified topics, so I don't think that I can summarize them in a very short time, but I just want to highlight some of the things that I discovered as a very important. First of all, 
uh, through the uh, education and also the uh, trainings, the uh, you can enhance the uh, these areas. Especially the people who are working in, in STEM areas, that uh, it is very important to, to increase the women who work and, and study in the STEM area. That will help the uh, narrowing of the discrepancy. And uh, when a woman uh, start uh, their own business, we need to provide the appropriate trainings. This is not just for the trainings, but in case of the uh, peace and security, to uh, provide the gender equality, uh, men have to receive the training. And to change the mindset, uh, once in a year, uh, you have to receive uh, uh, diversity training. Uh, we heard from the panelists that they mandate the uh, once in a year training for the gender equality trainings. And also, we had uh, uh, some um, contribution about the uh, media, uh, the express of the media, and uh, what's projected in the media has so much impact on the general public. And also to promote the participation of women in every sector. You must have uh, great commitment from the top leaders so that uh, they can uh, position women in decision making position and also the uh, a very uh, critical position in the environment so that they can gain experience and then can be confident about their uh, work. And even for the securities, uh, you have to prevent uh, the uh, uh, gender uh, violence. And we have to increase the women's participation uh, in the uh, police and also the peacekeeping security forces. And uh, as for data collection and also uh, disclosing of those n numbers, also um, pointed out as a very important factors. To increase the women's participation in private sectors, first of all, you have to collect statistics and also disclose them to the general public. In case of a natural disaster, the needs of the woman and the vulnerability of a woman should be also reflected in the responses. In other words, we have to collect the uh, information about the woman. Uh, you really have to use appropriate tool to uh, collect what are really necessary in case of disasters. And then the things that we shouldn't forget is that the AI, artificial intelligence, and also ICT, uh, the use of these are very critical. In the past, women had to work on the unpaid work. Uh, child rearing and also caregiving for the elderly. Um, as for these matters, uh, telework promotion so that uh, we can provide a flexible working environment. And also, the you can use the online calendar to share everybody's schedule. Um, and also, the partnership was picked up as a very critical uh, driver. Uh, government, uh, civil society, and, and businesses. Not just that, but also communication, regardless of the generations, are important. And today, uh, we have uh, heard about the uh, Women's Empowerment uh, Initiative, the WeFi uh, program. The um, entrepreneurship may help the uh, lots of uh, economic empowerment of the woman. However, the women are uh, discriminated against getting the loan from the financial institutions, uh, have difficulty getting the know-how and uh, skills of a management of a company. And from the successful entrepreneurs uh, shared their messages. And also, they gave a very encouraging message uh, for the audience. It was very insightful. The world is changing so rapidly. Responding to these changes, uh, we really have to create our future. And how do we realize these ideals? It's really up to our behaviors. The outcome and achievement that we received during three days seminars, we have to reflect them not just in Japan, but also 
for the worldwide campaign and activities. Um, for the uh, outcome of this uh, WOW 2017 is going to be uh, summarized as the Tokyo Declaration of WOW 2017, and we will be uploading this uh, to the website by the end of today. So at this opportunity, I also would like to extend my appreciation for the speakers and the moderatorships, and also people who helped to organize these conferences, and also for the people, audience, who participated to this uh, three days conference. Thank you very much. I conclude my speech with my sincere prayer for your health and prosperity in the future. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Satoshi Suzuki, Deputy Minister of Foreign Policy, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Now, lastly, but not leastly, let me call upon Mr. Yasu Toshi Nishimura, Deputy Chief Cabinet Secretary, to say a closing word. Mr. Nishimura, please. Good morning, everyone. As was introduced, my name is Yastoshi Nishimura, Deputy Chief Cabinet Secretary. Thank you very much for your participation in and contribution to WOW 2017. I would say this on behalf of the Japanese government. In fact, some 22 years ago, I was at this venue and I had a wedding ceremony in this very room with my, with my wife. I was kind of uh, reminding, reminded of uh, myself uh, over 22 years ago. I'm going to have uh, lunch with my wife later on, so I would like to talk about this uh, later on with my wife. I have three daughters, two in high, uh, the university, in one in high school, and they are able to go to abroad to study, and they are actually moving on independently on their own. So uh, the members of the WOW participants are very active in various many areas. So you are breaking the glass seating or even iron seating and they are really shining and realizing your full potential. So I was able to learn that the seatings can be broken. For my daughters, I hope those seatings will disappear and women participation and the women's potential can be fully realized by looking at your participation into WOW, I was able to convince that for my daughter's age, that will be the case. The technology is changing quite rapidly now, and social media is now penetrating, and the terrorism or other international conditions are changing, so the world is now changing so rapidly. WOW in changing world, was the theme for this year, and we are now able to have this for three days. And I think the choice of the theme was quite timely, and we were able to deliver a very good results. WOW over the past years have grown to be a very powerful platform which creates movement for women empowerment. I actually took part in high-level roundtable and special session yesterday, and I felt the heat of the venue, the place was full, full house, and I saw a very active uh, discussion yesterday, so I was able to realize that the society may now be changing. The aim of WOW is to accelerate the society where women shine, and the Japanese government wishes uh, to that to happen. So please, um, if I may ask you that the Tokyo Declaration of 2017 of oh WOW can be also a guidance to your activities going forward. As uh, Ms. Honda analyzed, 
According to World Economic Forum Gender Gap Index, we are now ranking as 114th. We are not able to stay here for long, so Prime Minister Abe and Abe administration will take advance, uh, affirmative actions. At least we want to be over 100 very soon, and in the near future, we would like to rank around uh, 30 or so. So please uh, help us in uh, achieving that status. Thank you very much for your three-day efforts. Cooperation and the great contribution and see you uh, in WOW next year. Thank you very much. Mr. Nishimura, Deputy Chief Cabinet Secretary, thank you very much. And uh, dear audience, thank you very much for joining us in the past three days. World is changing. In order for women to shine in the society, we were able to think together what we can do. With this help, we would like to conclude World 2017. I'm, um, I am Minori Takano from uh, NHK World, your MC for the past three days. Thank you very much.